Hi y'all, I hope you're doing well. Your response to my master closet uh, build project has been amazing, and I can't thank you enough for that. You guys have had actually a lot of questions and comments about that video, and I've responded to you in those comments, but this video is to address those uh, questions that you have and others have had, and I figured it'd be best to do it in this format. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the camera around, we're gonna look at different things in the closet, I'm gonna talk about them and how I did it, and I'm also gonna give you a little bit of extra footage that I wasn't able to put in that first video showing you some of the mechanics and things of how I built this master walk-in closet. All right, well if you're ready, let's get started. All right, a lot of you have had questions about this shoe shelf. One of the first questions you've asked is, what degree do you have your shoe shelf tilted at? Well, to answer that, it's about 15 degrees. And to achieve that, I had to create a 15 degree cut on the shelf before I applied the face frame. This is a three quarter inch face frame that is um, attached using glue and brad nails. I then uh, made some grooves on the bottom side of this shelf to hold it in place when those pins are installed uh, right along here. Let me take this shelf out, go into a little bit more detail with you, and then we'll look at the pins. All right, so here we have it. We have our shelf. This is what the bottom of the shelf looks like. This is a groove that I channeled. It's about a quarter of an inch and it goes all the way through and it's done with a dado blade. I also did it to the back. Is, uh, this is the, the front and then this is the back. You can see here, that's the channel and then there's one here and you can see the 15 degree uh, degrees that I have on. Let me make sure my camera's in focus so you can see how it sits. All right, so it's just glued, brad nailed. This has a little um, a groove on it because my face frame right here pops out just a little bit. So I had to notch this to account for it because I wanted it to sit nice and clear and I didn't want to have to have a little gap all the way through. All right, so let me uh, grab my camera and show you the pins. Okay, so here you see the pins and how they're laid out. Let me move these shoes and you can see it's offset and it's offset by three pins. So a pin goes here for the front, skip this one and then go up one. And that's where the next pin sits. And so that'll tilt the shelf and that back groove will catch on that pin and the front groove will be held by that pin. And so it's just exactly the same on the other side. That's how the shoe shelf sits in place. Let's take a look at it with the shelf in place. You can see here that the shelf is held in place by the groove and the pin. That's the back. And then here's the front. Another question that comes up quite often is, how did you build your face frame? Is there an underlip, an overlip? Well, I hope to answer all those questions. And to do that, I'm gonna show you some additional footage that I filmed when I first made this closet that I never shared in the first video. I hope it'll answer all your questions and it'll give you the details that you need to make your closet. All right, let's cut to that footage. I started with installing the face frame base plates first. These are kick plates base plates, whatever you want to call them. What I'm doing right here is I'm adding a shim or a spacer uh, as there's a little bit of a gap that I needed to account for before I installed my base plate. This is just because my wall uh, wasn't perfectly square when they built my house, so this is to accommodate for that and hide it. I'm just checking the alignment and then I'm putting another um, piece of wood underneath because I need to have a gap that the carpet goes under. So be sure you account for that before you install your base plate. You want to have at least a half an inch gap uh, so the carpet can go underneath and be tucked away. After I installed the base plates, I installed the vertical face frames. This covers up any wiring or the gaps that I had in between the wardrobe boxes. You can see here on the left that I don't have one installed and you can see how the wiring's tucked away. I'll talk about how I wired everything up in just a minute, but this is what it looks like 
covered up. And I'm just moving around. I have my son here testing the lights to make sure I didn't nick any of the wires while installing the face frame. Here you can see I'm installing another vertical face frame and you can see that it's sitting right on top of the kick plate. And I'm using my brad nailer to nail it in place. The width of my face frames are one and a half inches. This is to account for the half inch thickness of plywood that I use to make each wardrobe box and the half inch gap that I have spaced between each cabinet. I gave myself half an inch to accommodate for any issues that I would need in leveling anything and also a space to put the wiring later on. In the corner I had to make a custom strip. It's a half inch wide and it's three quarters inches deep. The plans that I have for this project provide all the details and dimensions you need. I'll be sure to link that in the description below if that's something that interests you. Now what I'm doing is I'm installing the horizontal face frames. To do this, I cut everything to the right size and dry fit it. Once I knew the fit was perfect, I then used my brad nailer to attach it to the wardrobe box's edge. Now, you can do several things here. You can just nail it straight in like I did, or you can use glue and then attach the face frame and then nail it in. It'll give you a secure bond. I decided not to do that with my mine, but it's totally optional and it's up to you on what you decide to do. Here I am at the top repeating the same process I just did. All right, well now we're gonna cut to a quick little montage of me installing all the face frame and we're gonna stop on one little particular part that you need to pay attention to. Okay, let's take a look at the corner over here. What you need to do is the face frame that you're going to cut, you're going to want to put a little bevel on it, the edge. I recommend doing this so it flows nicely into the other wardrobe. You don't want a little piece of wood sticking out or your clothes to catch on it. All right, let's take a look at the final face frame. Here it is. Another question that I get a lot is how do you make your drawers? Well, to make my drawers requires three basic things. One, it requires to have a box, a front panel, and slides. To make the box, I actually made a video a while back and I'll put a link to it right here showing you how I make my boxes. It's super simple to do. It doesn't require uh, many tools at all to do it. Um, the other thing that you need to learn is how to install drawer slides uh, the easiest way to do that I found is using a simple scrap piece of wood and I made a video about it I'll put a link right here if you want to check that out the third thing that you need to learn is how to make your front panel um, I think that's what these are called if you guys know the right term please post in the comments below I would like to know I call them panels or faces uh, and this face or panel is a shaker style version um, and let me show you a little bit more detail. I'll pull this out. This, what I'm talking about the panel is this piece right here, this piece of wood. It can actually come off. It's only held in place by screws that are from the back. And I'll take the camera behind here and show you that in just a minute. This requires a little bit more advanced technique to make. I'm actually gonna be working on a video here soon showing you how to make shaker panels of all shapes and sizes. It's just a technique that you have to learn and it can be applied to any type of door panel, whether it's a drawer or a cabinet or anything like that. But for now, I'm not going to go over the details on how to make this actual uh, front panel or plate. Um, I just don't have time in this video and I'll address it in another video uh, soon. Um, let me take the camera show you how I attached this and what the drawer looks like inside. Okay, this is what it looks like on the inside of the drawer. You can see here, this is the box. And this is the front face frame for the drawer. It's held in place by four screws. And the reason why I used four screws is the first two really weren't secure enough and I needed to get tighter out here. So I used a thicker screw and put a washer on it so I could really tighten it down. And that's how the front is held on. 
and it's very secure. It's it's not going to come off. I can guarantee you that. So that's how the drawer uh, front plate is held together. So for this drawer, I use soft close uh, pulls. So I just push it in and it pulls itself right on in and it's flush. The same thing is on the bottom. You can see the slides right here. So if I just push it in, it pulls itself right on in. Another thing I would like to talk about is how did I get this line semi-perfect all the way around in between each one. And I'm just gonna tell you, it was very hard. It was not fun. What I did is I actually used clamps and clamped it together where I thought it was good. And then I would drill a hole and hold it in place, make sure it was right. I used some scrap pieces of wood and I basically worked my way from the bottom. So I put in a little scrap piece of wood like right here and here. And then I uh, basically clamped and then screwed in. Then I took the next one. I pulled the drawers out like this. I put a little scrap piece of wood in, scrap piece of wood, clamped, clamped, and then screwed, and then repeated the process as I went all the way up. Now, it was not easy. It was not fun. If you guys have a better way of getting alignment um, with this type of style and inset drawers, I would really, really like to know. So please post any recommendations or thoughts you have in the comments below. All right, so the last question I'm gonna address is lighting. How did you do the lighting? I wanna know where's the wires? How did you hook it all up? All those questions I hope to answer in this video. First, let me pull back the clothes here and show you the box. This is what I call the box. So, no, not everything's inside this panel. That would have been nice, I, but I have a lot of room above my shelving that I have everything. This just hides the power cord that's plugged into the wall. When I built my closet, I installed several outlets, all the, uh, I think on each wall, at about this height. So that's where the power outlet is for my closet. And it's controlled by the switch that I have over here. It turns on all the lights. I also have a, a remote dimmer switch that I can adjust all my lighting with, and that's part of the controller that came with my light kit. But this box right here is just hiding the power cord. That's all it is. I'm going to take you to the top of my closet and show you how everything is hooked up. The first thing we're going to look at is the power supply. This is the power supply that I have for my closet, and your power supply is based on how long your LED runs are. And the company that I bought this from, uh, Flexfire LEDs, can help you figure out what you need. Um, they have a free uh, design person that can help you out. Anna is who helped me. She was amazing. I would recommend uh, working with her or anyone on her team. The second thing that you're going to need is a controller. Now, this is the controller that I have, and this controller is what actually converts the power that I have right here to the right current for my LED lighting, and also has the remote controls uh, so I can work with my wireless remote. All right, so I have my LED strip, and it goes through the top, and it sticks to the top of the shelf. Uh, there's a 3M backing on the back of the LED strip, and it's very uh, secure, so it's not gonna fall off. I then have it attached to a jumper, and that jumper is then attached to the top one up here, which is then connected to this one, and it runs all the way down to the end. Now the tricky part was when I had to run a piece all the way through here, I stopped that you can see up here and it comes through the back side, runs all the way through, does the same thing on this corner, runs all the way down. And then what I did is right here, behind this face frame, I dropped a channel and it, uh, wiring goes all the way down and then it pops out right here. And then I have a new strip that goes all the way down on the bottom. And then it comes up right through here, goes all the way up, comes through here. You can see where it pops out. And then it runs down here 
through the bottom. And then what I did is I have a wire that runs right here, you can see. And then it comes out through here. And then there's a new strip. Then it comes down right through here, pops out. And then it terminates right there at the end. So that's how my LED strips are lit. And it really turns out well. Here's the controller. So I'm going to just, I'll show you what it looks like. We're just going to hit power off. My main light here is always on. I can power it on. I can control the temperature so my wife can see what her clothes look like when it's warm. So she can use warm tones or she can do cool tones. And I can also control anything in between. I can make it dimmer, uh, all those different things. Really nice setup. So that's the lights. I hope I was able to answer all your questions that you had about this master closet. If I did, smash that thumbs up button for me. I'd really appreciate it. And if I didn't get to your question or you still have more questions, please post in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to reply to you personally. All right, well, I have a lot more stuff coming out, a lot of more things that I'm making. And if you don't want to miss those things, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ding that bell to get notified. All right, guys, till next time, I'll see you later.